Hu Tao has finally come home, and I can safely say that she was well worth the wait. Not just because she has really fun gameplay and does insane damage, but because of the small creative details that went into her design. I will be analyzing various parts of her, including her visual design, cultural influences, animations, and themes. And of course, since this is my own speculation, feel free to correct me or give me your own interpretations in the comments. Without further ado, let's get right into it. I guess the best place to start would be her name. A quick copy and paste into Google Translate gives us walnut, but that's not entirely accurate. If you asked a Chinese speaker the word for walnut, they would give you he tao, which is similar but not the same. The first character can mean seed or nut, which makes sense given that a walnut is a seed. What our Hu Tao actually translates to is the group of nuts which come from the Juglandaceae family of trees which produce both walnuts and pecans. So why make this specific word her name? Well, the walnut tree is a symbol of intelligence or wisdom, but also the first character of the word which replaces seed can mean recklessly, foolishly, or wildly. This strongly correlates with her personality, where she is a mischievous prankster normally, but is very smart when it comes to anything funeral related. Also, fun fact, Hu is her family name and Tao is her given name. We know this because her grandfather is referred to as Old Hu, and also, names in Chinese are spoken in this order. This is actually quite interesting because while a few other characters in the game also have last names, they are rarely mentioned. Moving on to visual design, without a doubt, the first thing I noticed upon seeing Hu Tao for the first time was her eyes. I've already praised Genshin before for being able to create different kinds of eyes while still staying in the same anime style, but I still think it's an underappreciated aspect of the character design. While Kaching, Kaya, and Dainsleaf have diamond shapes in their eyes, they are not nearly as striking as the bright white stars in Hu Tao's. Details like these may be minor, but they help make characters stand out amongst the rest of the cast. However, plenty of anime have characters with eyes like these, especially as a way of visually representing power-ups, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see more in the future. Hu Tao's next iconic feature has to be her Harmony Hexagram hat, which we know the name of thanks to the story section. The initial assumption is that Harmony refers to the harmony between life and death, but the hexagram part needs a little bit more of an explanation. There is no visible hexagram on the hat, so instead we will look to the symbolic meaning. It has been used in many different cultural contexts, namely the Star of David and the Seal of Solomon. However, the meaning that is most fitting comes from Kabbalah, a discipline and school of thought in Jewish mysticism. Their interpretation focuses on the fact that the hexagram is made up of two triangles pointing in opposite directions. This represents the union of the spiritual and the physical. Now this seems pretty plausible, but in Chinese culture, a hexagram refers to something completely different. The ancient Chinese philosophical text known as the Yi Jing is composed of 64 different hexagrams. For context, a legend states that the hero Fu Shi discovered that everything in the world could be broken down into 8 trigrams, composed of combinations of 3 lines. A broken line represents yin, and a solid line represents yang. Later on, the amount of lines was doubled, turning the trigrams into hexagrams, with each one having its own distinct meaning. The hexagram for harmony is 13, which is a number often seen as a bad omen. Furthermore, it is composed of the trigrams for flame and heaven, which can also refer to a person's spirit. Now it all comes together. Side note, it took me a whole hour just to make <laughs> that one connection. But now that we're done with that, we can get back to the hat itself. The charm front and center has the insignia of the Wangsheng funeral parlor on it. It kind of looks like it has the shape of a heart or a flame both of which would be pretty fitting. From Hu Tao's story, we know that the hat originally belonged to her grandfather, who, to put simply, was built different. To make the hat properly fit her, Hu Tao had to modify it, which could be a possible explanation for the knot at the back. Another key feature is the preserved plum blossom, which Hu Tao picked from a tree that she planted and grew herself. Plum blossoms bloom around mid-February, and so they represent the thawing of winter. Unfazed by the cold, they are associated with strong endurance, which makes sense for Hu Tao since you'd have to be a pretty strong person to become the director of a funeral at the young age of 13. Under it is an indigo string, which looks like it could be a cloverleaf knot, the most basic and popular Chinese knot representing fortune and good luck. It may be hard to notice because of her long sleeves, but Hu Tao wears a red bracelet on her right arm. Originally from Kabbalah, but also in many other beliefs like Chinese Buddhism, this represents warding off evil. It can also symbolize qualities of courage and protection. Last for this section is Hu Tao's jacket, which has horizontal knots down the center, similar to that of a Chinese Tang Zhuang. On it, there is a reflective pattern and there are gold detailings sprinkled throughout. It reminds me a lot of gold embossing, which is used on fancy cards, maybe like the ones you would receive from a funeral business. 
Hoot House coattails are designed with floral patterns. I can't say I'm great at identifying flowers, but the ones on the back right and inside seem like they could be lilies, which may represent life and rebirth. The flower on the back left, however, is completely different looking. It kind of reminds me of the red spider lily. This flower, which can be found natively in China, represents death and reincarnation. You might recognize it from some popular anime, which use it for its strong symbolism. Next up is animations. Hu Tao falls into the medium-sized female body type, and so she has those basic movement animations. She also has the same plunge attack as every other polearm user in the game. Her menu animations for looking at weapons and talents are also reused, but other than that, everything seems to be unique. Her charge attack is just like Shangling's for the most part, but she skids on her heel at the end. When her elemental skill is activated, the skid is slightly different. When Hu Tao dashes, she can pass through enemies and a butterfly effect is displayed. If you listen closely, you can actually hear the flapping of their wings. The effect is a shade of yellow similar to the trail of physical attacks and they both turn red-orange during Hu Tao's skill. The sound effect played is also changed. Speaking of her elemental skill, on activation she strikes a pose and you see the image of a butterfly. For her elemental burst activation, the camera zooms in just like on every other 5 star character. This animation shows Hu Tao whipping around her ghost and for a brief moment when it hits an enemy, you can see their soul leaving their body. And last but most certainly not least, we have the basic attack combo. When I first saw it, my first thought was that it looked carefree, and the more I looked into it, the more sense this made. The reason why it seems so different is because Hu Tao has her arms pointed straight out away from her. Typically when fighting, you would want to keep a free offhand close to you in case you needed to protect yourself with it. In fact, if you look at Zhao's attacks, his offhand is around his chest area. And this makes perfect sense that he would take a more serious approach to fighting considering that he is all about slaying demons. Meanwhile, Hu Tao does not even like fighting to begin with. Getting back to the actual attack animations, Hu Tao's are similar to Fischl's in that they have a bit of extra flourish when resetting back to the default stance. Animations like these are rarely even seen, yet the animation team always puts so much effort into making them. Now talking about themes, let's get back to those butterflies. In her character teaser, Hu Tao mentions that they are guides because they want to become Seelies when they grow up. As far as I can tell, this is just a reference to how Seelies are typically guides to treasure, and also how they are spirits of the deceased. The description for Hu Tao's elemental skill, Guide to Afterlife, states that Hu Tao's secret spear technique is based on several rules, the first of which is the spear opens the path to the afterlife and the butterflies bridge this world and the next. Butterflies can symbolize transformations from one lifestyle to another, as caterpillars and butterflies live completely differently. I can't think of any other kind of animal that would better represent how life and death are completely different yet are tied to one another. This concept is further explored in many different ways. The Chinese characters for the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor literally translates to Hall of Rebirth. Hu Tao's elemental skill, Guide to Afterlife, sacrifices her own health to increase her damage. Contrarily, her elemental burst, Spirit Soother, grants regeneration upon hitting enemies. These abilities, in combination with her passive talents, promote a gameplay style where Hu Tao's health is constantly shifting up and down. In a way, it represents the endless, ever-present cycle of life and death. Other Hu Tao related terms continue to follow these themes of death and butterflies. When Hu Tao activates Guide to Afterlife, she enters the Paramita Papilio state. Paramita is a Buddhist word which translates to perfect or enlightened, and Papilio is the Latin word for butterfly. Her constellation is another butterfly, with the name Papilio Carantis. Carantis is the Latin word for Charon, a character from Greek mythology. Charon was a ferryman who led the souls of the recently deceased across the river Styx to bring them from the world of the living into the world of the dead. This is quite fitting considering that in Hu Tao's vision story, she literally communicates with spirits who are on their way to the afterlife. I talked a little bit about the Hillatoon in my previous video, but I found some more cool information about it that is worth sharing. You probably already knew that the melody for the English version is based on the nursery rhyme Rain Rain Go Away. Silly churl, billy churl, silly billy hilly churl. Rain, rain, go away, come again another day. However, the Chinese version is also based on a nursery rhyme. <sighs> 
Hu Town mentions six hillichurls, but the nursery rhyme Shi Chi Tuze is about ten rabbits. The omitted 7 through 10 has one digging the grave, one burying, one crying, and one mourning. And while it's still a mystery, it's suspected that the rabbit who died was a sacrifice for the first. Yeah, it's basically just a really morbid song. The Korean translation also seems to be about the same as the Chinese. Huge, huge, huge thank you to everyone who commented about this because I literally would have never known about it otherwise. Throughout this video, I've mentioned stuff from the lore stories, but I won't talk about it on its own simply because I didn't feel like there was much more for me to interpret there. It's certainly an entertaining read, but overall it pretty much just reinforces Hu Tao's core personality traits, being that she is very silly but also has a serious and caring side. You may have also noticed that I haven't mentioned her story quest at all, and the reason for that is that I haven't played through it yet. I started it on my stream earlier this week, but between working on this video and submitting school assignments for the end of this term, I have not had that much time to play. But don't worry, I will eventually be talking about that in its own separate video. So that about wraps up everything. Mihoyo, you've done it again, making another amazing character with an insanely deep design. I had a lot of fun making this video, despite how long it took, and I hope you learned something interesting as well. If you enjoy videos like these, I plan on making more for other characters, so I would appreciate it if you considered subscribing to the channel. And as always, thank you for watching.